Call of Duty is actually good again. This is just gotta be one of the most shocking developments of 2022 because the last couple of years, every COD has been trash. They've had bad balancing, boring maps, very skewed different styles of weaponry, but now we have an actually decent experience. I decided to stay up all night last night playing non-stop Modern Warfare 2 to really test out all the different aspects of it. The new game modes, the third person options, and well, just the tons and tons of guns that I managed to unlock. And I have to say, it's really good. It's got quick time to kill. It's got really explosive visuals. I mean, this is a very different style of COD, but only because it's actually decent. It's the COD you know, with a little bit of tweaks that make it surprisingly fun. Let's talk about that. What's up, Gabers? Dreamcast guy here. Hi, hope you're having a great day. If you could do me a giant favor, like this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, I'll make you guys a deal. If this video hits 3,000 likes, I'll give away a copy of Modern Warfare 2 on whatever console you want over in my Twitter account. Now, first and foremost, always I have to put the gigantic warning. This is an always online experience. You know that, right? This is online multiplayer. So if in the future you stumble upon this video and they've ruined it with update patches or turned all the guns into freaking balloon animals because of clowns, I don't know, that's not on me. We're talking about the game as it currently exists on day one. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2's campaign definitely impressed me when I played through that, but going into this multiplayer, even with lowered expectations, I kind of expected it to not be great. Let's start things off by talking about the guns themselves, because this is definitely the most important aspect of any online shooter, is making sure that whenever you pull that digital trigger, it feels great. There is a very, very, very tight aim at tight speed, there's a very tight sense of impact with all of your bullets. I tested out a bunch of the different weapons, from shotguns to snipe rifles, big maps, small maps. Everything feels very, very, very well balanced, but towards the smaller experience. There's a lot of different maps inside this game. In fact, I think this may have the most maps I've ever seen day one on any Call of Duty. But when it comes to the build out, the smaller maps definitely feel better. Uh, let's talk about Ground War real quick. This is a 64 person mode and honestly, it does not feel great. Because this game is more tailored in my opinion to the 5v5 or 6v6 combat, putting 64 players and big vehicles on blown out cities and completely destroyed highways and stuff like that, on paper, it sounds like it would be very, very fun. Ground War kind of sucks. This game definitely shines the brightest when it's you and another person and reaction time wins. The time to kill in this game is incredibly short. I mean, literally, the first couple bullets are typically going to kill you. But to me, this feels great. There is this annoying aspect of some video games lately where it feels like they're trying to slow things down. They want to try and make it so that everybody's got shields and body armor and specific weak points you have to hit. I do kind of enjoy that Call of Duty feels like the last shooter that really just prioritizes that whoever manages to get that shot first is 90% of the time going to win. Now, of course, I'm biased because I am somebody with a very quick reaction time, which is how I keep mowing down everybody in these clips you're seeing here. But even still, I have to say that when it comes to stuff like the submachine guns, the shotguns, a lot of the stuff here, everything feels surprisingly well balanced, but I wasn't able to unlock everything. In the first six to eight hours of play, so far I've managed to halfway prestige, which means like there's 55 levels inside the game initially. I got up to level 24. And in that time, I did get a chance to test out a lot of the different guns, but specifically, I do love just the standard M4. I don't know why, but the starting gun with a ton of attachments always feels so incredibly good. I did test out different stuff like AK-47s and all sorts of different snipers and stuff like that. But still, for some reason, the tried and true basic gun, the Mario of rifles, is still just the best balanced, at least thus far. 
But let's talk about weapon customization and weapon unlocks, because as far as I can tell, these are a little bit strange when it comes to how you're going to get new guns initially. So you might expect that if you want a better uh, submachine gun, you're just going to use tons of submachine guns that slowly by ranking up a particular gun, you're going to get improved versions of it. But that's not really how this works. Instead, you have to constantly be switching between all the different weapon types by leveling up the opening shotgun it'll give you a better large machine gun by using that you're going to get a better uh, non-scoped rifle using that will unlock a different category of like pistols or rocket launchers now obviously this is made to encourage you to experiment with all the different styles and classes of guns but I just enjoyed my original one so much that it sucked that even though I kept leveling up the fact that I kept topping the score charts it sucked that I couldn't just you know unlock the high level guns of different varieties until I kept flipping between all the different categories. But that brings me to the weapon customization directly. So this is pick five. Every single gun has a bunch of different slots to just put on custom scopes, barrels, grips. This is a ton of different aspects of the weapon itself that allow you to tinker with its speed of aiming, its ability to be scoped very, very deeply, or even just stuff like how fast you can aim while running, you know, stuff like that. Well, What's interesting to me is you can only select five of these, even though there's a ton of different slots, there's only five at once that you can have equipped. So you really do have to try and pick what is most important to you. If you're some loser that wants to just camp in the corner with a shotgun, perhaps you want to try and get an extended barrel or a better grip, because let's face it, you're never going to stop just scoping and sitting there in the corner like a wuss. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry, I've been killed by a lot of campers tonight. Whereas if you're somebody like me who enjoys running around the map and trying to find that next target to kill, I did like having abilities to make it where I can scope very, very quick. I can out aim my target because with my incredibly good reaction speed, a lot of times I can get that headshot before they even get their gun fully up. I like this customization system because it does feel like there's an interesting cost benefit analysis you have to do. It's not just about, all right, what is objectively the best? It's what fits your play style. But this brings me to the very strange new perk system. So as we all know, perks have existed inside of Call of Duty for, I mean, decades at this point. But typically, the way they've operated is these are constant passive bonuses. Stuff like Scavenger that lets you pick up additional weapons and ammunition off dead bodies, or something like uh, Swift Hands that makes it so you can switch between weapons or even aim quicker. There's a perk like Overkill that allows you to have two primary weapons simultaneously Spontaneously. Stuff like this that really changes the nature of the game. Well, in this, you don't have all of your perks at the very start of the match. Essentially, there's three separate tiers. There's like green, which is pretty decent, then blue, which are the stronger things that are unlocked about two minutes into the match, and then towards the end are when your makeup perks are unlocked. Stuff that are going to make it so you have quicker kill streaks or just big game changing benefits. And I have to say, I think this mechanic is interesting because it creates creates a lot of, well, very motivational momentum. If you're playing well, it accelerates the speed at which you unlock your perks. So to me, it felt good when I was on a kill streak. There was a time where I got a 16 person kill streak. I'm going to put that screenshot here because honestly, it felt good to mow these hoes down. And it's great that then I have a bunch of perks at my disposal so I can start to kill even faster. I can play even better. There's this interesting sense of like reward from a match to match kill to kill basis that I feel like a lot of games just can't replicate. The biggest compliment I can say about Modern Warfare 2 is that it's surprisingly zen. While I was playing it, I felt so calm. I kind of wanted to just put on a podcast and vibe out. I kind of enjoy games that are fun, that require reaction speed, that require focus, but also they are good to relax to. I think this is going to be my primary at the end of the day game that I'm going to play just for funsies for at least the next couple months. Just something to log in get a couple kills, be blown up, you know, and then move on. 
But let's talk about the three really big controversies that have already struck this game. First and foremost, the PlayStation exclusive perks. This page is absolutely real. For whatever reason, it seems like Sony has struck some sort of crazy bargain where if you played this on PlayStation, you get extra loadouts, you get bonus experience points, there's even stuff like skipping tiers on the battle pass. I, I'm not sure how they managed to finagle this. There's even talks that apparently you can turn off PC crossplay and console crossplay on PlayStation, but nobody else, which means Xbox players are really being thrown into the deep end because they're going against people with keyboard and mouse who are like quick scope 360 people instantly with a name like Milky Butt. Whereas PlayStation people, we do have a leg up. I'm playing this on PS5 and let me tell you, it looks great and it feels weird that I have this advantage. Next up is the maps. Some hardcore COD fans seem to be upset by the maps, and I will admit, some of them are not great. Specifically, they have one map that just, I mean, is so bad it's baffling. This is just a closed down highway with a bunch of cars just sitting there. It's not fun, it's not exciting, it doesn't have any cool crazy landmarks or environmental storytelling. I mean, it's difficult to even call out targets. What am I going to say? Oh, he's next to the Ford Explorer? Oh man, he looks like he's next to that jeep like it's just a straight shot it's got to be the most boring first person shooter map i've maybe ever seen in my life i think they were just trying to crank up the number of maps and this somehow they counted it as a project now the final controversy is the skill based matchmaking but this one is still being kind of debated whenever you play this game you sort of get a rating points how good you've done in an effort to try and make it where you're matched against similar players i'm pretty decent at this i was killing a lot of people so for the first couple hours when everybody was really raw and fresh i was getting insane kill streaks i mean i was mowing people down so i got a pretty high skill based match matchmaking rating. Now, whenever I decide to play the game, it's going to throw me in against other players of an equivalent skill set. Now, the reason some people don't like this is that if you happen to get a crazy kill streak, if you happen to get a really, really good match where you've got your buddies backing you up, a communicative squad, you've got your favorite gun and you happen to get like 30 kills or something like that, then it can skew your rating really high and then you're going to get absolutely dumpstered for the next couple rounds. It feels weird that incredibly good players seem to be complaining the most because if you are in the top 1%, Every single lobby is going to be sweaty, obsessive campers who have like crazy, crazy, crazy KD ratios. To me personally, this may be controversial, but I think skill-based matchmaking is going to make this game live longer because new players can fight against each other. They can figure things out. They can test stuff out. They can level up and unlock the guns, whereas the high-level people can battle it out and constantly get that interesting experience instead of just just, you know, just blowing everybody up like they're NPCs. Overall, I have to say, I do enjoy this game. It sucks that it's $70, even on PC, but when it comes to Call of Duty, it feels like it's back. It feels like this is the first COD in maybe, I don't know, four or five years that I've actually just downright loved. We'll see if they manage to screw it up with microtransactions in the future, but as it currently stands... Activision, you're getting a giant thumbs up from me. But what do you guys think? Tell me about your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, give it a big old thumbs up, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already, and please keep dreaming. I'm definitely going to go keep dreaming. I <laughs> Going no sleep, I I'm 36. These overnight constant games, they're, they're fun, but uh, oof, I'm going to enjoy a nice nap. Thanks so much for watching that video. If you want to see something else, you can always click this link to see what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.